So when I'm developing my backend APIs, the last thing I want to do is then take that whole mindset that I'm in and transfer it over to creating a front end UI for it. So for example, if I have a form and I have the API built for it, uh, I don't want to then have to style the form. I just I've always wanted it to be automatically created for me. Well, now you can. Amplify Studio just announced the ability to take an arbitrary JSON and have those types inspected so that your form fields are created automatically for you, which is super, super cool. Let's go to take a look to see what it looks like today. So first things first, I'm going to create a brand new Next.js application. So MPX uh, create next app. And there was a new release. So I'm gonna say at latest here to get the latest and greatest of Next.js 13. We're gonna give our project a name. I'm gonna say that this is gonna be my contact form, just like so. And we are gonna be using TypeScript. The cool thing is that this is by default now. And uh, yeah, let's have ESLint in here as well. Great, once this gets done, I'm gonna go ahead and open this up in VS Code. Okay, so nothing too crazy so far, but as I mentioned, I'm gonna be in that backend mindset. I just wanna create my API. So I'm gonna bring in Amplify over here. And we're gonna see something like Amplify uh, init to get our project set up. Now, if you use Amplify before, you know how this goes. Uh, we'll just go ahead and let it kind of do all the scaffolding for us. That configuration looks just fine. And then I'm gonna set this up with my default AWS profile. Once this gets done, we'll move on to the next step. Okay, we just got done with that. And just like it says here, we can use the Amplify add commands to bring in different AWS services. So for example, I'm gonna say Amplify add API. And this is going to generate a GraphQL API based off of a schema. Now all the defaults work fine for me. So I'm going to say continue and then I want a blank object since I'm going to be starting from scratch. And yes, I do want to test this out right now. Let's get rid of this and let's go ahead and create a basic schema. Okay, so for a contact form, these are some fields that you can probably expect to have in a lot of common forms these days, right? A uh, cool thing is that as always, we have these directives at model that's going to create our database as well as all of the CRUD operations for us to interact with our contact API. In addition, because we're using a public API key, the authorization mode is going to be, well, allow public. This is looking good for our needs, so let's go ahead and push this up to AWS. Perfect. It looks like that got deployed successfully. We have our endpoint here as well as our API key. Now this is a public API key, right? We don't need to protect it in any way, but it does have to be sent with every request so that the um, queries and mutations do successfully go through. Just something to keep in mind. In any case, I'm gonna clear this out and I'm gonna move over to the AWS console. And once I'm in here, I can head over to AWS AppSync. And the reason being is because I wanna test out my API. Now here's my contact form. And if I go to queries, then I can actually kind of get rid of this and open this up a little bit. So that way we can run a query. And I just want to make sure that whatever I put in here is going to uh, successfully run and then specify the fields that we need here. Okay, so I have my sample data inside of here. As you can see, I gave it that age. One thing to note is that it is an AWS date that we specified. So it has to be in this year, month, day format. Uh, same thing with email. It is going to automatically check if this is a valid email. Once I click on submit over here, uh, you can see that I do get my data, which is looking great. Uh, but the main point of doing this wasn't to really showcase how to send an API request. It really is to grab this input field over here. So I'm going to break this down. There we go. And I want to grab all of this input right here. So now if I search for amplify over here in the service category, I can actually look at this um, contact form that got created today. And then in terms of creating that form automatically, I'm gonna hop into Amplify Studio. So to get that set up, we click on Set Up Amplify Studio and just flick this to on. So once that's turned on, you can actually head over to our contact form right over here and click on that. And then now we have the ability to launch uh, Amplify Studio. This is where things get really fun because we have our input. Now, if I click on UI library, remember that I had that input that I copied and pasted, right? Well, the Amplify team has created this form builder where I can select new and give this a form of something like my contact form. Probably want to keep the naming the same. And this form is going to be in charge of creating stuff inside of a database. And sure, it can be a blank form, but it can also be a JSON object. Now, when I paste this in and sort of format it to how it needs to be, I guess it's 
uh, typical JSON here, right? So let's put this all in double quotes. There we go. And then, so once this is formatted to how we need it to be, I can scroll down and I can select create form. And just like that, it inspected the types inside of my form and created it automatically for me, which is, again, just crazy to me. Now, I can tweak this, right? I can say that instead of input, this is going to be uh, contact me. Uh, note that the age is an input.age, like it's already bound to my input, right? Uh, in terms of the birth date, I have a fancy date picker that I can mess around with. Uh, and then I have the ability to clear, cancel, and submit this stuff. Now, things get really easy for me as a say I'm a backend developer, uh, where I can just take all of this, like they built it for me, but uh, I can actually copy this and put it inside of my application. So let's do that. I'm gonna copy this, head back over to my VS Code, pull that in, and let's start configuring some of this. So with that pulled in, I have these other two steps here, right? So import the component and then render it out. Now it also gives me the ability to style it if I wanted to do that as well, in addition to all of the event handlers. So on validate, on cancel, I can control what happens in all of those situations. So let's see what this looks like in a full stack application. So over here in my index file, let's do some quick setup where I have to bring in that import, right? So there we go. And then I can get rid of all of this div. And I wanna go ahead and bring in, where are you? Here, my contact form. Uh, right there. Now, if I run this, it's not going to look all that great because I need some styling in here. So let's bring in some helpers. So we have npm, and then we have AWS Amplify, and then the UI React component. So we have those installing. Now, I kind of already know what I need here. So I'm going to clear that out while they're installing. And I'm going to wrap this in the Amplify provider and sort of get this project tallied up here. So if you see my other videos, you already know what's going on here but essentially uh, we're bringing in amplify and we're tying it to our back end right we have our config these are our uh, amplify exports as you can see here it has a lot of our configuration options and then i'm just tying those in so that way our front end is aware of what's going on with our back end now how do we bring this in together with the form let's run the application and see just where we're at so npm run dev and then we'll check this out on localhost 3000 just to make sure that everything's styled and at least looking like how we need it to do before we add in the functionality. All right, so I have the application up and running and note that this is an input field, so I can't type in any letters, but I can type in numbers here. And then in terms of the date, uh, I have a date time component. So I can say, yeah, this is, you know, here we go at this time. And then for the email, sure enough, there we go. And then for the name, um, I can put in Michael Leandro here. And note that it did do like an automatic check when I put in at at, it was like, hey, you have to be a valid email, which is pretty cool. So it is looking pretty good. Let's add in that functionality, though. So um, let's see what we get here. We're going to go ahead and just sort of console.log these fields. So that way we can see what we get back. It's all tied into input. And there we go. So this is interesting, right? When I'm putting in my birth date, note that it's giving me a date time field. Uh, that's actually not what I want. I wonder if we can go back into Amplify Studio. Um, so we have birth date here. And notice that it's a date time field. If I come over here and just say, yeah, I want a date field. Uh, now it won't give me the time. Can I just copy this? So I'll say copy. And then let's see what happens when we just kind of pull it in. So we'll run Amplify Pull one more time. I'm kind of curious, like we didn't have to redeploy, we just changed it. So I want to see if that gets updated. Uh, generating, all right. And then let's look over in localhost. Okay, that's pretty cool. That's cool. So all I had to do was like tweak it. So now I can select a date. Uh, we'll just kind of go here in the past. Age, uh, we'll say 34. And then when I submit, uh, it's not a date time, it's an actual date. Now that's super, super cool. Now I'm told from the team that when this gets fully released, uh, it will have the ability to inspect a JSON schema uh, coming from like an actual GraphQL API. So uh, that's coming down the pipeline. The team is aware they're working on it. So stay tuned and maybe I'll make another video if you let me know in the comments if that's something that you're interested in. Now from here, I have the input. So I'm assuming I can just like make my call right here. 
So on submit, I will make this async. And then we'll add in uh, everything that we need to, to submit this. Okay, so I have my query all set up. So I have my contact form. We're gonna go ahead and call api.graphql. And then we have to pass in the query, which is the create contact form and then the variable, which as you saw is that input object, which has all the fields needed based off of my schema. If I go ahead and submit this, let's see what happens here. I'm gonna have uh, this up and then I'll have the network tab up as well. So we can sort of see what's going on in both. Here is my data. If I click on submit, uh, and then if I inspect the headers or the response rather, I should be getting back, there it is, a data with an actual ID. So it did get saved in my database and that contact got updated. Okay, so there you have it. There's form generation based off of arbitrary JSON. And as I mentioned, the team is working to get full schema support, uh, but it actually wasn't too difficult at all to switch the types over in Amplify Studio, which I really, really love. So if you liked the video, feel free to go ahead and leave a comment. I'll share all the feedback over with the Amplify team. But until next time, focus orders, stay creative and keep on building. I'll check you out next time. Peace.